on the following day, when the people were standing on the other side of the sea, that there was, uh, that there was no other boats there except the one which the disciples had entered. And Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias, near the place, get this now, near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into their boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. They don't still, oh no. They'll turn around, because it's bent over, Troy. That, that's it. All right. Troy is the bread man. He is the biscuit man. All right. So that's very appropriate that Summer chose him for bread. No blue letters. Well, she's, whew, are, are they burning? <laughs> Go on, t- turn around. He likes the red letters for two reasons, God. That's so funny. That is so funny, you guys. You, you, you all got up early and you're ready for me. Bread. Picture it. All the little boats from Tiberias. Now, Tiberias was a sizable city. There weren't very many big cities on Sea of Galilee, but Tiberias was a good-sized city And everybody heard free bread and fish over on the north side of Sea of Galilee. (gasps) All aboard! Everybody jumps in their boats and they take off to the same place that Jesus gave the bread the day before. On the following day, free bread, free bread. Everybody got in their boat. Don't have to fish today. Free food. And so you understand that. If, if you announced free hamburgers at the square, people would line up and eat hamburgers. That's, that's just, we like to eat good food. And there's nothing wrong with the bread or the fish. Don't, we won't want to misinterpret Jesus. He's not downing the bread and the fish. He's challenging their motive. Luke writes, or John writes, they were seeking Jesus. They were looking for him. Where is he? Where did he go? Some of them may have hit land there around, found nothing. Where is he? Where did he go? And so they head to Capernaum, which wasn't that far. It's on the north part of the Sea of Galilee also. It has an easy shore to pull up your boat to, and it actually has black lava volcanic rock on the, on the shoreline. And so they could all get a number of boats there at Capernaum. So they found him. Ah, time to eat. Well, Jesus has an interesting word for them. Have you ever asked a selfish question? Don't have to raise your hand. Ever asked a selfish question and you got a rather sharp answer? For example, Mom, why didn't you buy me new tennis shoes? It was your sister's turn. And there's a message in that. It was her turn, and you're not the center of the universe. (gasps) I'm not. Or, why didn't you wait for me to get ready? You left without me. Response, because you are always late and you make me late. Message, get ready on time. Nothing wrong with that. Or, why didn't you save me some chocolate cake? You know I love chocolate cake. Response, You chose not to attend the birthday party, and the guests wanted more cake. Message, you should have been at the birthday party. You know, we have ways of saying things that if we get a little frustrated, zip! We know how to say it. And sometimes you hear the truth, don't you? Well, I didn't mean to say all that, but since it came out, that's what I meant. I think Jesus was in the same disposition. 
Here's this crowd has come for bread. He's looking at them. They are looking at me like I'm the bread man. And I have here come to give my life for them, to forgive their sins, to save them, make them new, and do all these beautiful, spiritual, eternal things for them. And all they're here for is bread. He was frustrated. So he told them, Assuredly, I say to you, you're only here for the bread. And then he preaches, labor not for the bread that perishes. And that's all kinds of things humanly that perish. But labor for the bread that endures to eternal life. He's not downing food. But he is putting their focus on what to labor for, church. What to labor. What are we to work for? What are we to look for? What are we to work for? Do we know what we're looking for? I think so. Do the lost know what they're looking for? I don't think so. So we have to show them bread. Now Jesus also said, you came seeking me not because you saw the signs. So Summer, would you put the word signs on one of the men? Troy, stay turned around. You're the, you're the sermon projection. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you need to trade in the letters, Summer, you can talk to Summer. Signs. You know, Jesus once said, if you don't believe what I'm saying, believe by the signs themselves, the miracles themselves. They're telling you who I am. I don't have a lot of time to go into the last part. And really, uh, Robin, to me, that's a phrase put on the end because God the Father has set his seal on him. That should be the beginning. Because God the Father has set his seal on him, because of that, don't labor for food that perishes. Labor for food that endures, that the Son of Man will give you. And the heart of this text, that's why I sent it out to you last night, that you might read ahead. The heart of the text is that the Son of Man will give us the good things. What good things? Grace. That's going to be the third point, Summer. And when you get to it, if you could put grace on one of the guy's backs, that's the third point. There are signs. The multiplication of the bread was a sign, but everybody just enjoyed eating the bread. In other words, Jesus had a big cookout at the Sea of Galilee. And so the next day, the crowd came for the next cookout. We understand cookouts. We understand fireworks. You know what America was looking for last week? I did a, right on, on the Google browser, it said, America is searching for. So it caught my eye because I'm writing a sermon on, do you know what you're looking for? So I wanted to see, what's America looking for? And so I clicked on it, and it brings me up. For 4th of July, America is looking, asking these questions. What does it mean? When is it? Where is the nearest fireworks, et cetera, et cetera. And then it had a graph of the, of the fireworks, of, of the searches on Google. And 95% of it, people were asking, where's the fireworks? Okay, that, that's a fair request. These people should have been asking, Jesus, where's the fireworks? Not just the cookout. Where's the fireworks? Where are the miracles? And then deeper than that, deeper than that, even beyond the signs and the wonders, is the grace. The, the heart of this is Jesus is trying to teach all the guys and gals in the boats who are looking for him. Say, so y'all came looking for food. I know, I know you like the food, but I came to give you grace. I came to give you God's favor that you don't even deserve. I'm going to pay the price for your sin, and I'm going to give you favor with the Father. There's no greater gift to give us the way into heaven, the way to the Father, the way to be clean. Is there any more joy than when sin is taken off of us? Uh-uh. We are free. And so those are, those are our points. Um, our communion centers around grace. The bread represents his body. We receive strength. Did Paul ever say to God, God, would you take away this thorn from me? God, please take away this thorn from me. He sure did. How many times did he say it? That's more advanced than we're saved by grace through faith. How many times did Paul ask God to take the thorn away from him? Okay, we're going to have a Bible study on that next week, three times. 
Okay, three times, Lord, take this away from me. Lord, take this away from me. Take this away. Lord said, no. What did God say to Paul when he would not take away whatever was harassing or irritating Paul to keep him humble? What did God say to him? My grace is sufficient for you. And my strength, my strength is made complete in your weakness. So grace also means strength. The bread strengthening our bodies and the grace to strengthen our souls. The wine, the cup, the blood. That's the payment, a blood sacrifice. I mean, Jesus knows all this. No wonder he's frustrated with the, with the, the bread boaters because he knows he's going to have to go to Calvary for them. He knows it's going to be horrible to save them, but he's willing to do it. He just wanted them to maybe appreciate it, and he definitely wanted them to accept it. And they finally did. On Pentecost, they all got it. 3,000 saved that day, maybe 5,000 the next, and they got it. And ever since, we've been getting it because the Holy Spirit helps us get it. So we're going to have Holy Communion. Uh, remember, the bread, God provides bread. Matthew 6, he's going to provide our food and our drink and our clothes. We're not to be anxious for these things because, really, he still does signs. I see some pretty amazing things in ministry, in you all, God doing them. Some you might once in a while say a miracle. Some are pretty notable. Kayla, I had no plans to be in the Life Center yesterday, none, but didn't bring my keys to church. And the only door that I know that I can get in around church is the Life Center. I'm not telling you which one or any of you, but I got in and it was 85 degrees. So I texted Phyllis, is anybody using this today? Yeah, Kayla, at 4 o'clock. Oh, so I texted Robbie, Robbie, it's cold. I mean, it's hot in here. Could you fix it? I hope it was cold for you, was it? It's next Saturday, Phyllis. <laughs> Robbie, sorry, man. Well, it's fixed anyway. <laughs> all right, signs. The Lord is, that's, a, that's a preparing sign, but it's all about grace. Anyway, Trent, happy birthday, Trent. Uh, Grace is the heart of our relationship with God. Jesus opened the door. He gives us a grace. And the work we do, the work we do is to believe him. Not pull up our boat and say, I don't believe. But to believe him. The red letters are truth. He meant it. So Wes, would you bring the communion elements and the communion stewards? Fellas, thank you for your good work. The three points, bread, signs, and grace. All right, Troy, you're released. You're released. All right. Everyone who is looking for Jesus, like they were then, if you're looking for Jesus, you are welcome at his table. If you're a baptized Christian, any denomination, you are welcome to come to Holy Communion. Or if you're looking for Jesus, you haven't made a commitment, but you're interested, you're seeking, you are welcome. He would love to have you come to his table because he's looking for you too. He's longing for you. I don't, I, we're going we're to go to the sacrament. In that upper room, Jesus was looking at 12 men that he'd spent three and a half years with. They knew him and he knew them. He's about to give his life for them. They're celebrating the Passover which was the time when the lambs gave their lives for, at the Exodus and the lamb's blood was put on the doorposts. Well, Jesus was about to become the lamb of God and put his blood on our doorposts so we could come into heaven. He took that bread and he said, brothers, first he gave thanks to you, Father. Then he broke the bread and he said, brothers, this is my body broken for you. I want you to remember this. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat together and remember my death and resurrection. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Father, he gave you thanks. He gave the cup to the disciples again. Say, take and drink. All of you, drink it. This is the cup of my blood poured out for the new covenant. The covenant for the forgiveness of sins. The covenant that will be ratified by my blood. Covenants have to be ratified by blood. It was going to be Jesus' blood. So they drank. And maybe they started to understand how they were going to eat his body and drink his blood. They were going to do it through bread and wine. 
and do it in spirit. Jesus, we get it. We get it. Help us when we don't get it. And they drank his blood, and he is offering his blood to us today to drink in unity, to receive his forgiveness, to receive his grace, and to receive his abundant love. Let's pray. Father, we offer you these gifts of bread and wine, and we ask you to make them become for us separate, holy, to be the body and the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we ask you to touch us in this communion the grace that we thirst and hunger for. Touch us in this communion. Thank you for a seat at your table. Thank you for the honor of coming to your banquet. In your name we pray. Amen. There are four places to receive the communion. Two lines down the center aisle. You're welcome to kneel at the kneelers and to to pray afterward. and then just return by the side aisle. Communion is served. Y'all are welcome to the table of the Lord. Come.